appetite chip. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Uh, last year, legalized sports betting passed the House with a bipartisan majority, but stalled out in the Senate. We're back this year and intend to finish the job. More than 30 states, including all of Minnesota's neighbors, have legalized sports betting in some form or fashion. Minnesotans deserve the same opportunities that our neighbors have. But even more than that, legalization is the only responsible way to address the phenomena of sports betting. Only through legalization can we provide consumer protection. Only through legalization can we honestly deal with the terrible issue of problem gambling. Our bill includes both brick and mortar sports betting at tribal casinos, as well as statewide mobile sports betting operated by the tribes in partnership with commercial operators. To put that in plain terms, if this bill passes, Minnesotans will be able to place wagers on sports at any of the tribal casinos in our state, and they'll also be able to wager on sports on their smartphones anywhere in the state. We would tax mobile sports betting at a level consistent or below states around the country. The money generated from this tax will be dedicated to three causes. First, regulations and consumer protections necessary to make sure that sports betting is fair and doesn't influence what's happening on the field, particularly at the amateur level. Second, we devote 40% of the tax revenue generated uh, to addressing and treating problem gaming. We need to be honest. Uh, most people can gamble without issue, but for a small subset, it's a serious problem. We would devote more resources than ever before to confronting this problem. Finally, 40% of the tax revenue raised would go to funding youth sports and other youth programming across the state, with particular emphasis on communities experiencing a high level of juvenile crime. Juvenile crime is at an unacceptable level in Minnesota, and while there's no single cause or single solution, we know that when kids are busy playing sports, they're not getting into trouble doing something else. Uh, this bill is supported by the Minnesota Indian Gaming Association. It's also supported by Minnesota's professional sports teams, and you have letters from both the uh, tribes and the teams. And I want to thank them both and really commend the hard work uh, that they put in to reach an agreement. It's I think remarkable any time you have a large group of different corporate organizations come together to get an agreement and a large group of sovereign tribe nations come together to get an agreement, but the fact that they're also able to agree with each other, I think uh, really speaks to the collaborative spirit and the hard work that they put into it. And I'm really grateful uh, to all of our professional sports teams and all of our sovereign tribes for the work they did to reach uh, that point. Uh, we will continue to work with all stakeholders in this uh, area uh, to develop a bill that works for everyone. And with that, I'm happy to turn it over uh, to Senator Klein. Well, good morning. Thank you, Representative Stevenson, and thank you to the Press uh, Corps. My name is Matt Klein. I'm from Senate District 53. And I do want to start by giving full credit on this bill, in particular to Chair Stevenson, uh, who's doing it for the right reasons and spoke to me early once I became Chair of Commerce in the Senate about those reasons and has worked over the many years uh, putting in the legwork to get this uh, right with the stakeholders, as he said, with the teams and the tribes. Uh, so Minnesotans are demanding sports wagering, really, and they are in many cases already accessing it uh, on a black market. Uh, and much as with Sunday sales a number of years ago, they often don't understand why uh, their wishes and their uh, are being obstructed by government and creating inconveniences in their lives. As uh, dual chairs of the Commerce and Consumer Protection Committees, uh, we take very seriously our responsibility to establish sports wagering in this state in a way that is trustworthy, safe, and creates a sufficient guardrail around problem gambling. Um, the fact that you have both Commerce and Consumer Protection chairs here in tandem, that we have both introduced the same version of this bill, I think is a signal about how seriously we take uh, our responsibility to get this done this year, to work uh, coordinatedly, uh, in a coordinated fashion to get it across the line, uh, and uh, how important we take our responsibility around doing it well. So thank you very much. Happy to take uh, questions. Since the Senate is the spot, does this get through the Senate? That was the roadblock last year. What do we think the votes are? I know Senator Miller said Democrats don't have enough votes alone, he said, in the Senate to pass it. You know, those conversations are early. I take it uh, as my charge to get it across the line in the Senate. I'm very optimistic that we can do that. Uh, it likely will be a bipartisan vote. I think there's support in most communities across the state of Minnesota for this. Uh, and now that people have seen the language, I think that they can react in a more serious way to what we've actually introduced. Uh, so I wouldn't count us out. Why'd you leave the tracks off? 
So this is would be the largest expansion of gambling in the uh, in the state since the introduction of uh, the tribal casinos uh, and the signing of the compacts 30 plus uh, years ago. For such a significant expansion of gaming, I believe it makes sense to partner with the most successful, longest running uh, gambling operators in the state, which are our tribal casinos. They're the most highly regulated form of gaming in the state of Minnesota. They have experience uh, doing gaming at a level of operation that's much greater than any other operator uh, in the state of Minnesota. We want a product that's safe, that has great consumer protections, and that works across the state of Minnesota. Uh, and that helps all communities in the state of Minnesota. Only the tribes operate uh, in all corners of the state in terms of the people who we could partner with for this. And so I think it really makes sense to be the tribes, be the significant partner that we work with. But teams can partner with the tribes, the pro sports teams, the billionaire owners. But you're not, you won't allow the tracks to do that? No, actually, the teams are not going to be sports betting operators under this uh, bill. They support the bill, but they will not be operating sports betting. But they'll benefit from it. Well, I mean, I think there's a lot of people who will benefit uh, from having sports betting going on in the state, but the teams will not receive a direct uh, a benefit in the form of uh, a, a partnership or an operation. They're not going to be operating sports betting, and they won't be getting you know, a share of the tax revenue or anything less like that. Tell us more about why the tribes are so essential and how important it was or difficult it might have been getting them all together and getting them on board. <clears throat> well, we have had a system of, of, of tribal exclusivity around gaming in Minnesota, as I said, for 30 years, and it's worked well. The tribes have operated that without scandal very successfully in a way that has uh, minimalized a lot of the, the downstream effects of, of, of gaming. And as we continue uh, d down this approach, it makes sense to partner with the organizations that have the most experience, have done it the most successfully uh, without uh, scandal, and are uh, subject to the most regulation of uh, any gambling operator in the state of Minnesota. What's your uh, uh, tax rate, and what do you think the uh, take from the tax to use the gambling The tax rate is, is a 10% uh, tax uh, in the bill. Uh, and it's not going to be a, a major revenue event for the state of, of Minnesota. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, it was uh, 10 to 12 million uh, a year uh, when we uh, had the revenue note uh, last by them. I wouldn't expect it to be different um, uh, this year. We're not doing this to raise revenue for the state of, of Minnesota. We're doing this uh, in order to transition from a legitimate market or I'm sorry, an illicit market to a legitimate market and to put guardrails on the activity to get the consumer protections and take care of the downstream effects. We need enough money to fund those things, which this bill has in it, but beyond that, we don't, we're not looking to raise revenue here. 10% on what? On net, on the, on the. If you allow the, the books to deduct from the revenue that you get from the cost of their free betting before you get to their net, meaning do the taxpayers cover the cost of their promotions including copious free betting. I would not say that the taxpayers uh, cover, cover the costs. I think the bill right now uh, doesn't allow for a deduction but doesn't tax those. I think that's something we're going to have a conversation about uh, as we go forward. I, you know, that's, that's an item that's still uh, worth conversation about. Do you have an estimate for how much revenue would accrue to the state from this? The, the revenue estimate from um, uh, a couple years ago when we had the bill, I believe, was in the 10 to $12 million a year. A range. And do you think that's changed? Would you I, I have no. Re I mean, we'll obviously submit for a new revenue estimate, but I have no reason to believe it's the same tax rate in the same market. So I, I wouldn't expect a significant difference. And again, is that revenue specifically dedicated to all those pots of money, and how do you do that? Yeah, we yeah. would call all the revenue uh, generated this would go into a special revenue fund. The first thing off the top is the cost of the regulation, the cost to the agency to actually make sure that this is a safe and effective product, and then the remaining revenue is principally split in two directions. Uh, half of it going to um, uh, youth sports uh, with an emphasis on communities that are experiencing high rates of juvenile crime. Also in that bucket is uh, funding for integrity of the game uh, funds in, at the amateur sports uh, level and the collegiate sports level. Uh, the other half of, of the revenue uh, would go to problem gaming. Are there major differences between this and last year's legislation? There, there are differences in how the, the uh, tribal licenses are structured. Last year's bill had a hub and spoke system, and this year's bill gives one license uh, to each tribe. This bill also includes uh, some more integrity of the game language that the uh, professional sports teams uh, brought to the table, and I'm grateful for that uh, suggestion, was uh, quick uh, to accept that. Uh, but in terms of the major components, it's very similar to last year's uh, bill. 
positive or negative for charitable gambling? No, this bill does not have any input on uh, impact on charitable gambling. So from a user's point of view, if you're going to gamble on your cell phone and you want to download an app, like which tribe do you go to, which app do you use, or is that not decided yet? So we expect a very competitive market uh, to develop after this uh, bill passes. Each of the tribes in Minnesota would have the opportunity, if they choose, uh, to bring their own uh, product to market, either to, you know by partnering with uh, uh, outside commercial operators, companies like DraftKings and FanDuel, which is, I expect that to happen. Uh, and so I expect there to be a lot of different uh, operators in the market that you would be able to choose from and go to your phone and download uh, any number of different apps. We do want a competitive market uh, with a lot of operators. Under your bill, would people be able to, if they believe they are a problem gambler, put themselves on some sort of list to, per, you know, to do some sort of prohibition from participating in a gambling app? Yes, they can do that, and we also exclude people who, you know, by court order, for example, are instructed to not uh, to participate uh, in gaming or be, uh, uh, other people could be put on the list by the professional sports teams if, for example, they work in professional sports and we don't want them influencing the integrity of the game on the field. We also exclude people who work uh, in the industry uh, from, uh, uh, from participating in problem gaming because we want, again, a fair uh, product. How is that enforced? through the regulator. So we have the Alcohol Gambling Enforcement uh, Division. Uh, it's an existing division of the Public Safety Department. They do great work uh, regulating uh, the tribal casinos, but also our alcohol operations in the state of Minnesota, very respected agency. They will need additional resources in order to regulate this uh, as well, uh, but they would be the regulator. Do you plan to introduce um, a bill to change electronic vote tabs this session? We're having a lot of conversations, and, and this is just speaking for myself and not Senator Klein, but we're having a lot of conversations about electronic uh, pull tabs. Uh, I don't have any plans to imminently uh, introduce legislation, but I think it's a conversation that needs to be had. Can I have Senator Klein question? <coughs> Following up, I think, on Mary's uh, line of questioning, which is Senator Miller was here a couple weeks ago, and he said he did not think there were votes in the, there were enough DFL votes in the Senate to pass the bill alone, and that you would need Republican votes. And he thought Republican vote hinged on doing something to help the, the tracks. Can you react to his analysis of where the votes might be and whether you have a different count? Well, it was interesting at that press conference that Senator Miller was up here alone and did not have any Republican colleagues with him on that day. So I don't, I don't know if he is able or uh, authorized to speak on their behalf. Uh, certainly in conversations I've had with Democrats and Republicans, there's a great deal of enthusiasm about this bill, particularly uh, about the tribal exclusivity and the support that it's going to generate for the tribes in the state of Minnesota. So I, I think um, his whip count may be off, and I think we're going to do very well. So as you stand here today, do you have 34 votes? You know, it's early. The, the language has just gotten out there. I cannot say I have 34 votes right now today. Can I, can I add something to, what, what, uh, uh, to your question, Peter? Because I think that um, it's important to note a couple things. One is that no sports betting bill passed the Senate last year. Uh, I don't know that a sports betting bill that included the tracks would have had the votes in a Republican-controlled Senate last year to pass. And I think that that's oftentimes... Uh, lost in the conversation about what happened last year. But I'd also just say that I think that uh, there's a problem with counting to votes uh, in the House and probably also the Senate that in, uh, when you expand gambling at the tracks and beyond that. And I'd also note that if you take a look at the letter that the professional sports teams uh, uh, gave you today, in the last paragraph they note that they support uh, tribal exclusivity, uh, but if we're talking about doing licenses beyond uh, the tracks that they also think, or behind the tribes, that they think that they should also be uh, considered. And so you have to think about if we're going to go beyond tribal exclusivity, it's not just a question of the tracks. There are other stakeholders who would want uh, licenses. And um, I think that expanding gambling to that uh, level probably is an area that would give a lot of legislators in both parties significant concerns. And I don't think that there would be the votes to uh, pass that in the House. Uh, can't speak for the Senate, but I'm they couldn't pass the bill last year, so I don't see why they would be able to do it again this year. More on votes. You have a lot of new members. What's your sense of where the new members are at, and what was the margin last time? Uh, last year, in terms of your question of the margin, I think we had 70 votes or 71, 69, somewhere uh, over that. But it was a bipartisan uh, vote. I, I recall that there were 10, 11, 12 uh, uh, Republicans uh, who cross lines. I don't have the exact count in my mind. I'm sure you uh, 
see the record for that. Uh, we've had a lot of great conversations uh, with our, our new members about this uh, in, in the House. Uh, I do think it's something that people hear from their constituents uh, about. Uh, I do think that there's a really strong interest uh, among members both old and new in doing it right. If we're going to do this, to make sure we have a market that works, uh, that protects consumers, and that honestly deals with problem gaming. So the, the concerns that new members have I don't think are, are appreciably different from the old members, which is that if we're going to do this, let's make sure we do it right. Will we be the only state running through the tribes, giving the tribes exclusivity here? I don't think so, John. I, um, I used to know the answer to this. Uh, <laughs> Washington State, Peter's very helpfully reminding me. But there, there are other states I know that have done significant tribal partnerships. There's a lot of different models out there, over 30 states. Uh, have done this. Wisconsin also, I think, only has it at uh, tribal casinos. Um, they don't have mobile yet. Can you help me with some journal math here? If you're going to take oh God, you want me to do math? In a, in a 10% tax, that means $100 million in net under this. And if, and if, if uh, revenue is 10% of betting, is this a billion dollar market? I mean, do you know how we get down? I'd be very happy to give you the, the revenue note from last year that has those assumptions and, and uh, information in it. it, it it's money. I'm not I get nervous about doing money. math in public, so let me give you the revenue note and you can see the assumptions that are wrong. Something you said, well, you said members hear a lot about this. Can any of you yeah. kind of weigh in on this? Because I've heard anecdotally lawmakers say this is one of the top issues they hear about. Is that true for you, for other members? I don't know which one of the top issues I hear about is is an issue I do hear about. Quantity-wise. I've heard a lot of yeah. members say if they had to take quantity, this is... You know what? The people who care about it really care about it. So there's a passion level, too. I don't know if... if yeah. You know, Mary, I would probably say that it's a top 10 issue in, in my district. I've heard about it at the doors. I get continuous emails about it, um, like Chair Stevenson just alluded to. It's a lot of emails from um, people who have reached out to me in the past. People tweet uh, routinely to both of us about this issue. And, I, you know, it's something that people do really want the ability to participate in. You know, we're seeing the Super Bowl commercials, and my husband's like, oh, Oh, when are we going to be able to, to play along? So, I mean, I think that um, I think that it's just something that people are ready for, and they and they do really want to make sure that we do it right. What about timing of uh, floor votes on this? Is this going to come down to the wire? Or are you going to try to get something through sooner rather than later? Well, there's got to be a full and complete process. Uh, the bill needs to go through multiple committees in both the House and the Senate. We are not going to. Uh, shortchange the process. Uh, so, so I would not expect a floor vote uh, anytime soon. Uh, you know, I'm hopeful that we can get a lot of our work done uh, well before the end of session, uh, but we're not going to shortchange the process. We're going to go through every committee we need to go through and have the discussions that need to happen. It's a serious issue and deserves a full and complete conversation. So in no time soon, are we talking April, May? Well, uh, the bill needs to go through uh, at least six committees in the House. I think that's how many we went through uh, last time, and I would guess a, a similar number uh, in the Senate, not to mention the fact that we, in between now and there, we have you know, the state budget to pass, a number of other issues. I would be very surprised if we were uh, taking floor votes on sports spending uh, before April. Um, that would be shocking to me. Speaking of the Super Bowl, one of the things that Senator Miller thought some of the revenue could be used for was like a fund to bring in national sporting events like Super Bowl, Final Four. <coughs> do you have anything like that, or would you consider something like that? Uh, I do not have anything like that in this bill. I don't, you know, there's a bill that was introduced yesterday by those advocates that had a much larger number of, of general fund money. This is a relatively small bill in terms of the amount of money it generates for the state, so I'm, I'm not sure it's a good source for what, what they're hoping uh, to accomplish, and I think the things that are already in the bill are really important to fund uh, um, completely. So I don't think that this bill is the appropriate vehicle for that. Do you see the legalization of sports betting as a gateway to legalizing fantasy sports in Minnesota? Well, I think that having an honest conversation about gaming in totality is, is important. You know, there's a lot of the fantasy issue. There's a lot of other questions about what's legal now and what's what making laws about uh, it uh, would have collateral consequences. Uh, but um, I think that having a conversation about gambling on a larger level is, is something that we're going to need to do. 
you don't toss the tribes a bone at all with additional table games or anything else to address their concerns about revenue in this bill? There's no additional table games. Um, when you said tribes, did you mean tracks? Tracks, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, there's no. The tribes would like additional table games as well. Some of the tribes were interested in that. Uh, I don't know that there was unanimity around it. Uh, the, there's no additional gambling expansion other than sports betting uh, in this bill, and there's no gambling uh, additions at the, at the tracks at all under the bill. Have you talked to the governor's office about this? Uh, yes, uh, going for, for years now. And I think that, you know, what's important to the governor is kind of, as he's, I mean, I let him speak for himself, but I know that he shares uh, my concern for making sure that we hear and respect the, the voices of the tribes uh, and other stakeholders involved in it. Okay, thank you very much.